NSW. What NSW thing happened at a sleepover when you were younger? When I was younger, I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. My friend's mother was sitting on the toilet door wide open. Love her to death but she was basically built like the crypt keeper who smoked two packs of Virginia Slims a day. I've had that image seared into my brain for years. Friend of mine came up to my room all stone faced. Your mom is taking a bath with the door open. I walked in while she was bent over the tub. This was 1990 or so, and my mother was a single mom. Needless to say, it was still the 1970s down there, or so I hear. When I was in 4th grade my best friend and I were playing this game where insults were compliments and visa versa. Well after some back and forth between us I said yeah. Well you have a big dong as soon as his dad opened the door. I stumbled on my words trying to explain the situation and my friend couldn't stop laughing. His dad looked at me and his son in disappointment and shut the door. Talk about bad timing. A friend had a sleepover she invited me to for her birthday one year. We were in middle school, and she was the only girl I knew. I didn't know any of her other friends. One of them suggests a game of truth or dare. They started daring each other to do physical things. It started with making out and progressed to dares to perform fellatio on the other girls. If you refused to participate, they got to punch you in the arm as hard as they could. I was a very good girl. I didn't participate in anything, performing or receiving. My mom asked me where the frick I had gotten bruises all over my body. I told her we'd been jumping on the bed and I kept getting accidentally kicked. I went to the wrong sleepovers. 6-ish, 7-ish, sleepover at a friend's house his dad apparently went to the bar and picked up some hood rats while we were supposed to be asleep. We hear Al Green and smell smoke. Look out his dad's going to town on this one chick while another is sitting there topless calmly rolling joints on an album cover. So freaking cool. Distant cousins would visit us when I was younger. Female cousin and I were at that age where we weren't exactly sure what was going on with our bodies. We slept together thinking nothing of it but being the frisky kid that I was I spooned her with my preteen boner rubbing up on her butt. She wiggled back and we pretty much dry humped. Only happened once and never mentioned at all. My cousin used to sit on my lap every chance she could get. I could never figure out why she wanted to sit on me, but I hoped she didn't notice that I'd get rock hard every time. We were probably around 10-11. My best childhood friend and I were left home alone to our own devices for a while at his house while our parents got piled at my house. We were next door neighbors and our families were close. We were dicking around in his older, vivacious, high school age sister's room when my friend pulled a tampon out of her drawer and started to wave it around. I said something like yo how do those things even work dog for real really into Eminem. When my friend decides to show me and shoves said tampon up his butt, he pulled it out slowly and we both realized with horror that it was, in fact, covered with crap. He did the sensible thing and threw it at the wall while we both screamed like schoolgirls and were too grossed out to clean it up. Our dads still tell this story to our new girlfriends just to warn them that we might be gay. You introduce his sister as vivacious then you give the most boner killing story. 1415 YOI stayed the night with my best friend. His younger sister was friends with a girl a little older than her. We were downstairs on the living room couch watching Adult Swim and she asks if I want to give her a massage. Of course I do. So she lay down and I started massaging. Eventually she took off her bra and got some lotion so our massaging would be less hindered. I eventually worked my way down and started feeling on her side boob. I ended up fingerblasting her and she gave me what was I'm pretty sure my second hand job ever. The whole time my friend is trying to watch and I'm motioning to him to gtfo. We all go upstairs and go to bed after that. Of course she tells my friend's little sister. Little sister tells her older cousin and older cousin tells my friend's mom. His mom calls me into her room one night. Not in the way you're thinking. In so many words she tells me to feel free to jerk off in the bathroom if I feel the need to. That she understands that it's an awkward time physically. But to please refrain from fingerblasting her daughter's friends on the living room couch. I turned a million different shades of red. His mom handled it really gracefully and skillfully. Looking back, I'm impressed by her level headedness about it all. My parents would never have handled it that well. In so many words she tells me to feel free to jerk off in the bathroom if I feel the need to. 
that she understands that it's an awkward time physically, but to please refrain from fingerblasting her daughter's friends on the living room couch. I really 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 hope she used those exact words. <laughs> Slept over at my friend's place while in 8th grade. His sister was a year older and was always flirting with me. Well, it is late one night and she is watching a movie on the floor while I sleep above her on the couch. I wake up to feeling my hand being guided underneath some clothing. Turns out this is my first boob action I ever had. We kept this going on throughout our high school years. She used to give me rides home from school and I would fondle her the whole way home. Things escalated as we got older. I still miss those days. My friend had a bunch of friends over for his birthday. His parents left us alone for the most part. Anyhow we were wrestling in the basement when his older sister came down to see what's going on. She was a year older than him and she hung out with us for a while. However another friend accidentally ruined the birthday cake before it was brought out so the mother went with my friend to pick out a new cake. They left his sister in charge of the house. Anyhow while they were gone this guy convinced her to give him a blow job and all of a sudden everyone wanted one. She went around giving 6 guys BJ's when her mother walked into the basement and started screaming at her in Hindi when she saw what her daughter was doing. We were all sent home and never allowed back. When I was in 2nd grade, my really good friend had a sleepover for his birthday and invited around 10 kids from school. His parents had got him an Xbox for his birthday, with Halo 2 and 4 controllers, so all of us freaked out and played it in his room all night. Well. As things usually go with second graders, Halo got super intense and when someone would ask to pause the game to go to the bathroom, we would unpause it and kill them a few times before they got back. Well there was this one kid named Josh who was really good at the game, and would beat all of us almost all the time. So at some point in the night, Josh tells us he has to go to the bathroom. We all snicker because we know that we're gonna frick his crap up when he leaves, but he doesn't go to the bathroom, so we keep playing. We play for a while longer and Josh has a pained look on his face, so we tell him that he can go to the bathroom and we will all put our controllers down. He refuses again. After a couple minutes, we hear a loud farting noise, and immediately after, crap just starts falling out of Josh's pants all over the floor. We all start freaking out and Josh, who hasn't stopped playing, takes this as a sign that he should poop even more. Hearing a commotion, my friend's dad comes in, Pauses for a second to take in the picture of Josh unleashing the kraken all over his son's room, and just walks away. As soon as I read unleashing the kraken I absolutely lost it. When I was in middle school, one of my friends had her party at a hotel and we were supposed to stay overnight there, chaperoned by her mom, of course, or none of us would have been able to go. However, once we got there, her mom had checked in and took off, leaving us to our own devices. One of the girls had brought glow in the dark body paint and they all decided to strip naked and paint themselves, while drinking some beer that the mom had supplied us with. We were only 13, some tame lesbian activity occurs. Then, they decided that it would be a good idea to go to the hotel pool, which was officially closed at the time, and skinny dip. Me and one other girl were the only ones who refused to participate. I was pretty sheltered as a kid, so all of this was really shocking to me. The hotel manager ended up kicking us out of the pool area, but surprisingly, we just got to go back to our rooms, unattended. Her mom must have known the owner or something. If my mom would have known what was going on at that party, I just told her I had a good time and left it at that. The manager probably just didn't want to spend the time to contact all of your parents. Nor did he want to babysit you. Stayed at a friend's house. His sister also had a friend stay over. She woke me up and wanted to talk to me and wanted to give me a blow job. Took me to the couch and went at it. Pulled her titties out and used them went to the freezer got an ice cube and crushed it in her mouth and started sucking again. Then there was an awkwardness and she stopped and looked over and my friend's dad was watching. He mumbled something and went to his room and we went to the basement to finish. I can just imagine being the dad here, walking to the bathroom, walks past living room only to find his daughter's friend giving a BJ to his son's best friend. After staring in disbelief for a few seconds, the friend sees him. He mumbles, this did not just happen, I just had too much to drink. At my birthday sleepover in a 6th grade or so, one kid, Cody, woke up in the middle of the night to discover that another kid, Max, 
had managed to pull his pants down in his sleep and his dong was hanging out. So Cody took his Game Boy Advance SP, the kind that folded shut, and closed it on Max's dong. I awoke in the morning to find the rest of the kids discussing the event. I was never quite sure what to make of that. OW. The first time I slept over at a girl's house I was in 6th grade, and it was the group from an extracurricular activity. It was her birthday, the parents thought it'd be innocent, but we were old enough to be little shoots. We spent most of the night contriving a makeout scheme on the girls. One of them expressed interest in that stupid game where you press on someone's chest until they pass out. We didn't press very hard. Nobody passed out, but everyone pretty much touched all the boobs. The birthday girl puked, but being a kid, rallied immediately. We played some version of hide and seek in the dark, but instead I made out with one of the girls under a pool table. Something always goes wrong with the birthday boy girl. Camped out the back for my friend's 14th birthday with a few of my mates. Birthday boy suddenly got uncontrollable diarrhea, house was locked. We all managed to catch him crapping himself while desperately trying to get into the house. Good times. I don't get locking the house when kids are camping outside. That's how you get crap and pee in your yard. Truth or dare at a sleepover. Got four girls topless at one time. One used a doorknob to demonstrate how she cradles and licks a ball sack during a BJ. I got stuck dry humping a mattress. At another sleepover, I had to take a shower with a very obese girl. We had to scrub one another. At that same sleepover, I got a handy from a friend's girlfriend. I think he actually dared her to do it, but it was still awkward. It was like a quick, 5 second okay, I jacked your dong type of handy. One of my non-blood cousins put his hand under my shirt and I stopped him from anything else. That seems tame as heck compared to the rest of this thread though. This seems true as heck compared to the rest of this thread. FTFY. I was riding the bus to school with a gay friend and asked him how and when he knew he was gay. Since he'd never done anything physical that I knew of with anyone, I was curious how he was so sure. Kind of stupid these days but this was a while ago and I was young and dumb. We were both. 15, 16, something like that. This was over 20 years ago now. And then BSP. He told me, well, the last time I had a sleepover, after everybody went to sleep, I took out Robbie's dong and kind of played with it and put in my mouth and stuff. And you liked it, I guess. Yeah, I mean he stayed soft, but it was really fun to play with. Dongs are awesome. That's fricked up man. You shouldn't do that to people. You totally violated Robbie. No. Number. He was asleep. He doesn't know I did it, so it doesn't count. It still counts. You can't fricking frick someone who's sleeping and just say it's okay. I didn't frick him. He barely got hard. It was mostly just soft and squishy and you know. I flipped it around. It was fun. That doesn't make it okay. You having fun doesn't stop it from being fricked up. Well. It wasn't just him. I tried everybody out. I wanted to see different ones. Sam got hard. Oh my god. How many guys were there? Four. But I didn't do anything to Eric. But, you like Eric. He had a major crush on him. Exactly. Dude you raped three guys but left the one you're actually attracted to alone? I didn't rape them. I just, you know, played with them. And put them in your mouth. That doesn't count. And then BSP. This conversation continued for the entire bus ride to school. I know he didn't mean anything bad by any of it, but it's still pretty freaking fricked up. I wonder how many pretended to be asleep, because like your friend said, it's not gay if you are pretending to be asleep. I would just say I was sleeping over her house and she would say she was sleeping over my house and then we would drop acid and walk around town all night. I miss the 90s. Nothing like getting high as balls on LSD and taking the archetypal acid walk around late night suburbia. I had a bunch of sleepovers with my best friend in high school. We were both gay, in the closet, and solely using the sleepovers to freak. I don't know why but for a second I imagined you both didn't know the other was gay either. My friend replaced the batteries in a flashlight with his poop. Here is the full story. There were three of us. Myself, X and Y, our other friend Zed, much earlier in the week made plans for us to come hang out. If we ever went to his house, it was an implied sleepover. So we showed up and Zed's parents let us in. 
they knew he went out for band practice and just like us assumed he would be back later. So we had dinner and talked with them for about 2 hours. Zed never showed up so we went up to his room after dinner. His parents went straight to bed. Another hour went by and it was getting late. So I called Zed. He forgot he invited us over and lied about being at home really sick. We were standing in his room. So XY and I decided to get back at him. It started out harmless. We just wanted him to know we had been there. So we got onto his computer and managed to get into his World of Warcraft account. We name changed his main character to something like Zlakes but sex or something. We then sent all of his good stuff to X's WoW account. We then decided to play Zed's Xbox. This was back when the 360 had just come out, and he was the only friend we had with one. But Zed's power cable was missing. So Y and I started looking for the cable. Our search took us to Zed's closet where X started being annoying. Zed's closet was the size of my bedroom, and the lights did not work. So Y used his phone to light our way. I downed the soon to be notorious flashlight on a shelf and tried to use it. The batteries were dead and X, the soon to be poopist, was being really obnoxious trying to help us look by throwing random things at us over his shoulder. I threw the flashlight at him. He then looked at me and said dare me to crap in this I replied with the fateful two words. No balls. X then slammed the closet door locking Y and me inside. Y was still looking for the cable and I figured X was just kidding. I heard the toilet lid slam. Then I heard a hefty splash. Then an ugh. X then came back and unclosed the door so it was pitch black once more. He said yeah I couldn't do it you were right. I saw his outline in the dark reach out to hand me the light. So I took it and said see why. He's a sissy. No bar. Y turned to face us with his cell phone screen lighting up the horror. Coming out of the flashlight was about 4 inches of turd. I screamed in disgust and threw it at X. X caught it like some sort of ninja and threw it end over end as hard as he could back at me. I ducked and Y jumped to the floor. The pool light then splattered all over the back wall of the closet. We left like ghosts on the night. Hopped into my truck and drove to Y's house in silence. Where the sleepover continued and we finally began to cackle about our evil deeds. Strip poker at a cast and crew party for a middle school production of The Secret Garden. That was the first time I saw boobies out in the open. Glorious. The nudity lasted maybe all of 15 minutes, but 40 years later I can still see every second of it in my mind. We all paid heck for it in school and with our parents over the next couple of weeks, but the detention and grounding were well worth it at 10 times the price. When I was about 13, my buddies and I were staying at Steve's house for his birthday. Being the little punks we were, we had a nerf fight in his mom's basement, which was full of nice knickknacks. Naturally, they got broken, along with Jimmy's foot, after he fell down the stairs. As our punishment, we had to turn out the lights around 8. Jimmy, being the sip he was, slept with his bad foot out of his sleeping bag while a couple of the others played let's sword fight with PVC pipes in the dark. Naturally, Jimmy's ankle was hit, and he woke quite quickly. Being the stupid kids we were, at some point, a china figurine fell behind a cabinet, and Jimmy was instructed to get it out. Try as he might, he couldn't reach it. The idea of using an item from the bathroom to grab it out was brought up, to which Jimmy replied I can't find anything longer than a half inch in here. Since we were 13 year old boys, Jimmy's new nickname Halfinch was born as soon as he fell back asleep. Here's the real kicker. Jimmy was a sleepwalker, and around 4am, Jimmy got up, went into the closet, and started caressing the vacuum, gibbering about shaving cream and sleep. Naturally, Jimmy got continual crap about this all the way through high school, where he eventually became a loner and graduated with only a few friends. Wanna hear the best part? I'm Jimmy. Name isn't actually Jimmy. Also, I did go to a hospital the next morn. We found out my ankle was actually rolled, but I did need crunches for a few weeks. WTF you guys are real dongs to Jim. Oh on. When I was 16 I was at a sleepover with two other girls at one of their houses. When they thought I was sleeping, they started making out, and then eating each other out, and I kept my eyes closed and never told anyone, and then I acted surprised when one of the girls came out as gay a month later. Not so much a sleepover as a party that ended and we all kind of just crashed where we were. Anyhow, I had just graduated high school and was about to leave for Marine Corp boot camp in a week. 
I wanted to get laid before I left of course. There was this girl that was going into senior year that kind of liked me for a while. We found this little room with a couch in the basement and get to talking. Things progressed pretty quickly and I had some of the best freaking I have ever had in my like that night. Three times. Well, each time I did not have any condoms. So I would pull out and see em in her socks. Her idea. After all was said and done. I took her home in the morning and then proceeded to tell my friends what I had done. The poor girl became known as Socko for her senior year. So I think we were 12. At a someone's birthday sleepover. Well, me and my two best friends were invited but not close to anyone including the birthday girl. We broke off from the group to go talk. About an hour later the birthday girl parent found us and brought us back to the group and told everyone to call their parents. Apparently the other girls had been watching internet p. Female cousin and I decided to streak nude around the house in the middle of the night. I remember being cold as frick because her parents turned down the heat at night. We were young at the time. Old enough to know it was physical. Young enough to be clueless on what to do with my raging hard on. I guess it wasn't that cold then. Was sleeping over at a friend's house and was having trouble sleeping. So probably about an hour after he fell asleep and me tossing and turning I got up to use the bathroom. When I walked past his parents room I clearly saw his parents freaking. His mom was actually pretty attractive so I stood there watching for a solid minute. I've never looked at her the same way since. They knew. My campfire group would regularly swim topless in our leader's backyard pool. We were like 11 12 and just starting to develop. Our leader lived just off campus of a major midwest university. Looking back, we were diddler bait. Completely unintentionally. We were just embracing our emerging tea, and very lucky nothing ever happened to one of us. Esp considering these sleepovers often involved sneaking out in the middle of the night. It was my 8th birthday party and my two best girlfriends were staying the night. At the time my mother worked the night shift so my father was watching us. But he had to get up early so he was in bed when we were playing truth or dare and dared one of my friends to take off all her clothes and run to the bottom of the lengthy front steps and back. Being 8 years old we didn't really have a concept of nudity as a physical thing. Just that it was funny. Then, when she was at the bottom of the steps and headed back up we shut and locked the door because we were mean and because children we didn't realize how dangerous what we were doing was. We were howling with laughter while our friend pleaded with us to let her in. She was crying that she was cold so we grabbed some paper towels and handed them to her through the mail slot when my dad was roused to the living room and came in asking what in the world are you girls doing he opens the door and finds our friend on the stoop naked as the day she's born trying to cover herself with paper towels and my other friend and I were collapsing in hysterical laughter on the floor. My dad, champ that he was, just gave us a quick no more locking your naked friend outside. It's not safe then went back to bed. Ha ha ha. To be fair, in retrospect, we are all 33 now and still friends and we all laugh when we reminisce about that moment. Mostly because my father's reaction was so priceless. I just complete WTF. No more naked children in front of the house. Please. LOL. The 80s were a fun time to be a kid. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.